Hey there, it's Tom Corson Knowles, number one best-selling author of the Kindle Publishing Bible Series and founder of TCK Publishing. I want to welcome you to the Publishing Profits Podcast, where our mission is to help you turn your writing into a profitable career. Now, today on the show, we have a really unique guest for you. His name is Michael McIntosh. He is an author, he's a blogger, he's an online marketer, and he's the creator of the Superhero Training Academy. And in today's show, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to kind of switch things up on you here because Michael is actually going to be interviewing me on the show about my journey as an author, how I went from writing my first book at age 19 uh, to struggling to get my book published the traditional route. I couldn't find a publisher, couldn't find an agent, uh, my whole journey through that world. And then when I finally decided to self-publish my own books and uh, my whole journey from there, how I went from self-publishing to becoming an international best-selling author. So... I think you're going to love the show today. I'm going to share with you some, some real keys and lessons that I've learned over the years in my career. Uh, you know, everything from how do you get yourself motivated to write when you don't feel like it? You know, how do you overcome writer's block uh, when you can't come up with ideas, when you don't know what to write next, when you don't know what to work on? And uh, how do you really market your books and sell your books? Because that's really the key. I mean, it, it's really easy to self-publish a book these days, but how do you actually connect with your audience, connect with readers, and actually get them to buy your book and tell their friends about it? So I think you're going to love the show today. Grab your notebook and pen. I get ready to take great notes because you're going to learn how to make some serious publishing profits. Hello, hi. This is Michael McIntosh, and I'm here with Mr. X. He's a best-selling author, and he went from publishing his first book to making $12,000 a month within 12 months from start to that 12 month period and he's here to share with you how you can become a best-selling author and make a full-time living writing books so make sure you get a pen and paper ready I'm gonna ask him some questions and he's gonna be showing some very valuable information very practical tools that you can use right away to start writing your book publishing your book and getting paid so welcome, 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 welcome. So first of all, tell us about how you got into this publishing business, where you started, and you know what's you know been your motivation, and how have you got where you are? All right, Michael, thanks so much for having me. Well, I, I first started actually when I was a teenager. I started writing poetry, and didn't really know what I was doing. Never looked at it as a, as a business. Um, but my English teacher, looking back on it, said, you know, you're really gifted, you got these skills. I won this uh, contest for one of the poems I wrote. Um, but I went to business school and never really thought about writing as a career. Um, but, you know, I started, when I was in business school, I started studying personal development, like, really extensively. One of the books that, first books I read, read was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I really just completely changed my life and my perspective on money and wealth. Because up until that point in my life, I thought that money was a bad thing because I looked around at all the people who had all the money. And I said, you know, they're not making the kind of choices that I would make if I had that kind of money. And then when I read Rich Dad Poor Dad, I realized, look, money's just a tool. Like everything else in life, it's a tool. And, you know, if, if you have different values, when you have that tool, you can use it the way that you think is best to improve the world and make the world a better place. And so I started learning these concepts about money and wealth and what it really meant to be wealthy and to make a difference in the world. And I started writing my own books. It was really just for me. It was my own personal manifesto of of what I thought it meant to to have a good life and to live a successful life. Uh, and, you know, I only shared it with a few friends or family, but everyone said, you know, this book is great, it's awesome, you should publish it, you know, go get it published, get it published. And so I started approaching agents and publishers and got rejection after rejection after rejection and just could not break into the publishing industry. Uh, and that was, you know, basically six years of struggling to get published. And so I wrote several manuscripts in that time but never could get anything published. And then a few years ago, you know, a friend just mentioned offhand, you know, why don't you just publish it on Kindle? And I had been reading Kindle books for years. I had a Kindle for years. And I never even considered that I could possibly publish my own book on Kindle. I didn't even know you could do that. And uh, so I just started researching on all the blogs everywhere I could, everywhere on the Internet, just to figure out how could I publish my own books on Kindle. So I figured it out in about a week. Uh, you know, a week after that conversation, my first book was published. I didn't tell a single soul in the world that I published my book on, on Kindle because I, you know, I didn't want anyone to know. I thought I might look stupid. I thought I would fail. And so I checked in a month later, and I had like 11 or 14 sales. I don't remember the exact number, but I had a little more than 10 sales. And I was just like so excited. I was like – I was way more excited that first 10 sales than the first $10,000 a month, honestly, because I just knew right away that this was my future. You know, because I love learning. I, You know, I'm a voracious reader. I've read, you know, an average of about five books a week for the past seven years. So I love I love reading, right? 
and I love learning and I love teaching. And so that's what I saw in my books as my gift for the world to, to give back and my learning, the things I've learned and the things I want to teach the world. And so uh, that was that was it for me. So I just I just knew, you know, if I can sell 10 books without any marketing, without telling a soul, you know, imagine what I can do if I actually put all my heart and my energy and my effort in this and started telling the world about the message I have to share. And so I started doing that. I started, you know, all the old manuscripts I had written over the past seven years, I started, you know, as soon as I saw the light at the end of the tunnel that I knew I could get them published and I could do it myself, I knew I could start making money with them. I just, you know, I finished them so fast because it's funny when you get that, when you get that motivation, you know how you can do something, it becomes so much easier to, to do it and just get it done. Because up to that point, I had, I had like eight manuscripts and none of them were complete. I mean, one of them was mostly complete, but none of them were really complete books and none of them were, you know, at the level where I thought, you know, okay, now it's ready for, for, you know, millions of readers to read. Um, but as soon as I saw that light and started making the money, I was knew, okay, I, I could do it. And so uh, in that first year, I published, uh, I writ, wrote, and published 20 books. Wow. And uh, I had my first $12,000 a month about 12 months in. And, yeah, that's just how I got started. And, uh, you know, it's been an amazing journey, and I'm so glad to be where I am. But, uh, you know, as soon as I knew that I could get my books out there, that's when – everything changed for me that's fantastic and you know tom's actually shared with me about how to publish on kindle and once you understand the process of it and you know how it works it's actually pretty straightforward i mean there are a bunch of steps and you have to know what they are and you have to do them in the right order but it's actually pretty easy you know it's you know, it's just follow the steps. So we're going to be talking about what those steps are so that you can know exactly what you can do to publish your own books. So, Tom, why don't you tell us what is the first thing someone needs to know in order to get going to publish their own book? What's the very first, you know, step or first steps to get them going? Yeah, that's a great question. So the first step, honestly, is actually just take a step back. Because I think a lot of times people just kind of rush into something and don't really know what they're getting into. And so I think the very first step, uh, and the first step that now I use every time I write a book, I use this really simple process, is I get out a notebook and you know lock myself in the room, you know lock the doors, turn the cell phones off, no, no, no interruptions at all whatsoever. And I just get my notebook and my pen, and I write down a question on the paper, and I say, you know, look, if I had 30 days left to live, and I could only write one book in that period of time and we'll have one message to share with the world, what would that message be? And I write down, you know, the list. You know, what would it be? And uh, that's, how I, that's how I choose the final one. But sometimes before that, too, I'll ask, you know, just what, what message do I have to share? You know, what knowledge do I have to share with the world? Um, what would I like to write about? What would I like to be known uh, as the author of what kind of book? Um, so, you know, it's easy to get lots of ideas. You know, I could write about making chocolate. You know, you make great chocolate, Michael. You could write about you know, marketing and business and all these things that you're really, really good at in life. Um, but I think what, what happens for us creative people is it's, you know, it's really hard to narrow it down to that final subject. And so that's why I asked that question, you know, if I only have 30 days left to live, what message would I share? Because uh, otherwise you get bogged down and you start writing a book on business and you start writing a book about gardening and then one on nutrition and, you know, all these different subjects that you love, that you're passionate about. Um, but it's not it's not really the fastest track to, to getting published and making money. So I think that's why that having that focus is so important. And I think, uh, you know, putting that perspective of what's the most meaningful thing for your life rather than what's going to make me the most money the quickest. Because, you know, what I found personally is that every time I focus on the money, it doesn't work out very well. <laughs> but when I focus on how can I help the most people, it always works out really, really well. So uh, that's that's how you get, you know, your book idea. You know, a lot of people ask me, like, I know – I, I know I could write a book, but I really don't know what to write about. And that's why you have to go through that process of thinking. And it's not about asking someone else. I mean, you can go and ask your friends and your coaches and your consultants and colleagues, you know, what should I write about? But at the end of the day, you have to be passionate about it. You have to be inspired, you know, to get up and write your book because otherwise you're just kind of living someone else's life. You know, it's like, uh, you know, it's like, you know, the kids who grew up and, you know, their parents were doctors, so they, they wanted their kids to be doctors and they grew up to be a doctor and then they get 50 years old and they say, I don't want to be a doctor anymore. You know, I wanted to be a fireman or I wanted to write a book, you know, it, you know, so what happens is, you know, readers don't, won't get attracted to you and they won't love what you're doing if you're not really passionate about it and inspired about it. So I think that's the key thing first is, you know, just find out what, what is your message to share and get fired up by getting inspired about it. So that's the very first step. 
Then it comes down to writing the book, and honestly, that's that's easy. Once you have the mission, once you're inspired, once you know exactly where you're going, it's super easy to write a book. Uh, it's honestly not that complicated. And even if you're a horrible writer, you might be thinking right now, oh, I can't write. I'm the, you know, I got F's in English class, and I'm an awful writer. I mean, you don't even have to physically write the book because you can do what we're doing right now and just record yourself speaking, and then have a ghostwriter write the book for you. So that's one good strategy if you're someone who hates to write, aren't good at writing. Um, you know, you can just record your message basically and have a professional writer ghostwrite your book for you. Um, but if you're if you like to write like I do, you know, um, just spend the time on your computer and start cranking it out. Um, so the first thing you want to do after you have you 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 know you've chosen your book idea and you're really clear on that, the first thing you want to do is just outline your book. And it's super simple. I used to think outlining is something you do in school. It's hard. It's stupid. It's not really effective. But it's super easy. You know, five minutes again, lock yourself in your room, no interruptions, and just write down, you know, look, if, if there all, could only be ten chapters in this book, what would they be? You know, what are the ten most important things that readers need to know if they're going to read this book? And you just write down those major things, and then you know, that's going to become your, your basically your chapters for the book. And, of course, you can always change it around later, but just having that structure will help you really stay focused. Because what, what a lot of authors make, first-time authors, uh, especially when you're writing nonfiction, the biggest mistake they make is trying to put everything they know into a book. You know, it's like if you're writing a book on business, you'll write everything you know about marketing and everything you know about strategy and everything you know about operations and everything you know about finance. And by the time, you know, you're like five months in the writing project, and you're like, I still got so much more to go because you're not really focused, you're not really clear. You know, a book doesn't have to be huge, it doesn't have to be everything you know. It's actually much better to, for a nonfiction book to just be really focused and solving one main problem for your customer. So you want to think about it from your customer's perspective, not from your own. And that's a big mistake a lot of content creators make is that they, they're so focused on the message they have to share, they don't really care about you know, the customer and what the customer wants. So you know, look at it from your customer's perspective. Like if you're going to write a book on marketing, you know, what is the one, you know, the one most important result they're going to get by the time they're done reading the book? You know, is it going to be that they're going to have a marketing plan? Is it going to be that they're going to have new marketing strategies? You know, what exactly is it that they're going to get from the book? And look at it from the end result for the customer. And then when you have that end result, then it's easy to make the outline and it's easy to just stay focused because otherwise you end up writing a thousand page book that takes months or years to make and you never really end up making the kind of income or, you know, getting published as fast as you would like. So, uh, you know, so, you know, get the outline done and stay focused on, on your topic for sure. So that's, that's the main thing, uh, really, you know, finding out, you know, what inspires you, choosing the book topic, you know, getting that outline, staying focused on the customer's perspective and keeping the book focused so that you're not going, you know, too long and too broad, you know, keep your, your focus narrow. And of course, if you're writing, you know, fiction, if you're writing stories, you know, it's totally different, um, you know, it's a totally different process, but it really follows the same process. You know, what, if you're a fiction writer, you probably have different stories in your mind, right? So again, it's just choosing, okay, which story do you want to share first? You know, which one are you most passionate about? And then outlining it, and, uh, you know, really the, the biggest thing that I found that's, that's helped me is just reading other books on writing because there's so many wonderful teachers out there already. Like we were just talking about The Writer's Journey, yeah. this amazing book um, for anyone who's writing fiction. But it's also great for people who write nonfiction. And, you know, it's it's good for anyone who wants to, who has a story to share with the world. So, you know, the more you learn, the better you get. Yeah. Um, but I think it all starts, like I said, with just that mission, that purpose that you have, you know, that message you have to share with the world. And, you know, if you're totally focused on that, it's easy to get up early in the morning or stay up late at night and write your book. You know, time doesn't become an issue. You know, the how-tos don't become an issue anymore because you're inspired to do it. And that's what I found is the most important thing. Yeah, that's super important. And, you know, I just wanted to go into that a little bit. Um, I wrote my first book in 2006, and I'm actually... <laughs> <laughs> years later still refining that book right and um i've realized that it's so big and such a beast of a book that i'm gonna have to serialize it and chop it into pieces and make it about like because each basically it's but it's like seven books in one and it's just too it's just it's, it's a nightmare you know and so i've definitely fallen into that trap you're talking about where You've got all this stuff, and you're like, all right, I want to share the whole lot. But actually, 
if I think about it, each piece of the of the puzzle is relevant to different people at a different time. So some people are more interested in the beginning of the book and they don't care about the rest of it. Some people they don't they don't need that beginning bit at all. They've already figured that out. They need the bit in the middle or the bit at the end. So I'm just sharing from my personal experience. I totally agree with what Tom's saying here. And you're much better off just simplifying and taking one one particular problem if it's if it's a non-fiction one particular problem whatever that is like stress like here's a problem people are stressed if you can help someone cure stress good for you that's fantastic if you can help people get rid of their back pain great but something that's very focused and genuinely solves a problem because people are way more likely to buy a book that solves a problem then they are just some random big monster of a thing that just is a bit of this and a bit of that. So I just wanted to underline that. I think it's extremely important that, that what Tom just said. So once you got started, Tom, what are they going to do next? They've outlined their book, then they're writing about something relevant that they love, they're passionate about. What's the next step of actually taking it through to the point where it's ready to be published? How do you overcome the resistance? Because a lot of people start writing and don't finish in fact i know plenty of people more people don't finish than do finish by far so everyone wants to write a book how come most people haven't published a book or finished a book something going on there so what do you do about getting over that resistance yeah it's another great question uh that is a big problem a lot of people have and i struggle with that myself I think the, there's a couple different problems that tend to have that same result where people give up and quit. And the first one is just not being on mission. You know, you, know, you don't really know your purpose. You're not that inspired. You haven't asked that question. You know, if I had 30 days left, you know, what, what message would I share with the world? What book would I finish? And because you haven't gotten really clear on that, you're not that motivated. So, you know, you get up in the morning, you get up at 6 a.m., you write for two hours, you go to work or whatever you do for the rest of the day. And after a couple of weeks, you're just like, I'm getting tired of this. This is hard. I'm not, you know, I'm not getting as much sleep as I used to. You know, I don't feel as good as I used to. You know, it's getting harder. I'm starting to have to edit my own book, and I don't know how to do that. And there's all these different challenges that come up along the way that you didn't expect. And so what happens is, is that the pain of completing the book is more than the pleasure that you anticipate you're going to get when you're done with it. And it's just a simple fact of human life that, you know, we're motivated by pain and pleasure. So if you see more pain in something than you see pleasure in it, you're just going to stop doing it. You know, it's just human nature. So, you know, that's one thing you can do is just get back to that super focus, that, that mission that you have. Because, uh, you know, like I said, when you're inspired, you know, you'll go through any kind of pain. You know, like, uh, you know, a mom, if they see their child in trouble, you know, their child's hurt or they fall into a pool, they need saved. You know, the mom will do anything to save that child. And if you don't have that same kind of motivation to, to finish your book, you're just not going to do it for most people. So, you know, it, it's getting clear on, on the why. You know, the how becomes really, really easy when you are when you have the why right. There's a great video by Simon Sinek, uh, another TED Talk, um, called Why. And he talks about, you know, why it's so important to know why you're doing what you're doing. So that's one big major reason uh, that people quit because they just they're not really clear on their purpose. So, you know, going back to the beginning, asking that question, getting clear on your purpose, that's one thing that will really help. But the other thing we already talked about is, you know, being, you know, writing a book like you have, which is just, ends up being this monster book covering, you know, eight different issues or challenges or more that people have instead of being super focused on one specific issue. Um, so if you can really get your book focused down ahead of time when you're doing the outlining, you know, plan ahead of time, you know, what am I going to leave in this book and what am I going to leave out? I've got a list I call my shiny penny list. Mm -hmm. Um, and I call it my shiny penny list because, you know, it's like you're walking down the street and all of a sudden, you know, and you're, and you're going to write your book, you're going to make money from publishing your book, right? And all of a sudden, you know, on the way to the bank, you see a shiny penny on the ground and you bend over and you're like, oh my God, look at that penny. I found a penny. I got to go pick it up. And, you know, you find another penny and you find another penny and you find another penny. And, you know, like two years later, you're like, my book isn't even done yet. Yeah. Why did that happen? It's because you found all these other opportunities that came up along the way. And so what I do is anytime I'm writing a book and I have an idea to write another book, I'll put it in the shiny penny list. So if I'm writing my book on, you know, you know, publishing a Kindle book, for instance, and I get an idea of, you know, uh, how to write a book, which is a different book, right? And I'll just take that and whatever, and I'm inspired to write that moment, I'll write in a different document. 
and I'll save it in my shiny penny file list of, you know, books for the future. It's not the book I'm working on now, it's a future book. And so it's still I still get that same, you know, whatever I'm inspired to write, I still have got it written, I've got it written in a different manuscript, it's somewhere else. Um, but all those different opportunities that come by, I put them somewhere where I know I'll have them for later, but it's not my focus now, and I go back to getting focused on what I'm going to complete. So that's one thing that comes up is, you know, a lot of times people will just, they'll get distracted by their opportunities. You know, uh, I talk to authors all the time, and they'll say, oh, I heard you can make more money blogging. And so, you know, halfway through their book, they start blogging. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, you know, oh my gosh, I heard podcast shows are the way to get really rich, and they start a podcast show, and they and they don't finish their books. So... You know, it's wonderful to do all those things. I've got books, I've got podcast shows, I've got YouTube videos, I've got products, I've got a publishing company, I've got all these things going on. But I make sure that whenever I'm starting a new project that I'm I'm fully committed to it and I'm going to finish it and follow through. And again, it just comes down to, you know, having that purpose and having a really clear vision of what the end product is going to look like because, you know... You know, I'm sure before you wrote your book, Michael, you didn't think well, this is going to be 100,000 words and it's going to be this gigantic project. You thought this is going to be super easy. I'm just going to write this one book. It's going to be it's going to be so simple to just get it done. Yeah. Uh, but if you're not super clear in your outlining phase and super clear in your planning phase about what exactly is going to be in the book and what's not going to be in the book, you know, it's it's, it's probably even more important to figure out what you're not going to include in your book than what you are, because that's going to limit you. And uh, the more limits you have, the better you're going to do because because what happens is if you don't have limits is you just everything you can possibly think of goes into your book and it just becomes this mess like you talked about so you know stay focused and really plan ahead of time this is what's going to be in my book this is what's not going to be in your book before you start writing because i guarantee you once you start writing if you're inspired if you're on purpose it's going to be so easy to write 10,000 words or 50,000 words for your book it's going to be super easy to do it um and the problem you're going to have is having too much rather than too little so ahead of time, if you can just set those limitations for yourself, this is this is what's going to be in my book, this is what's not, I'm going to focus on this, uh, that's going to help you finish. And then, you know, when it comes down to it, is the rubber meets the road, is you have to spend time writing. You know, yeah. you can't write a book without actually doing the work, you know, and you can do the audio recordings like we talked about before and have a ghostwriter, and that's perfectly fine, there's nothing wrong with that, um, but no matter how you how you boil it down, you're going to still have to do the work of creating that content for people. And so what I do, and the, the number one piece of advice I have for someone writing a book to get it finished is schedule your writing time. Always schedule it in your calendar. You know, we had, we had a schedule on our calendar for this appointment, for this interview right now. And I'm not going to miss it. You know, I missed it earlier and we had to reschedule, right? But I called you. It's because this appointment's important to me. But what happens is most people, they have these appointments with other people that are important to them, but their, their writing time is not important. So they don't put it in their calendar. You know, you need to schedule your writing time like you schedule your appointments with people and never miss it. You know, if you have an appointment at 6 a.m. to write your book, get up and write your book. There's no excuse to miss an appointment, right? That's how you need to run your life and run your writing career. Uh, you know, schedule it in your calendar, get it done. So, you know, I recommend at least seven hours a week is a minimum if you're writing a book. If you're serious about writing a book and completing it, at least seven hours a week is a minimum. And I recommend doing it at least 15 minutes a day. You know, every single day, just touch it at least 15 minutes. Maybe you're not inspired that day, maybe you don't have a lot to write that day, but at least 15 minutes, just touch the keyboard, get some words down on paper, because that's going to get you in the habit of writing consistently. Uh, you know, there's all these, I've studied, you know, a lot of the great writers and all these great writing quotes, and it boils down to one thing every great writer has said about inspiration is that inspiration is not something that comes to you, it's something you create. You create by doing the work, by putting the time and effort and energy into something. And I tell people all the time, you know, look, your first book is going to be your worst. Your your next, your you know, you'll never write a worse book than your first book, because mm-hmm. it's your first book. It's like everything in life, you know, we're never the, the best the first time we try something. You know, if you go try a new sport or surfing or something new, you're never going to be great when you start. You're probably going to be pretty bad when you start. But you know, a great mentor told me, Keith Cunningham. He said, you know, look, anything worth doing is worth doing poorly at first. You know, anything in life that's really worth doing is worth doing really, really badly. And you get better. You know, you don't stay bad forever, but you, you start where you are and you get better as you go. So it's really just a measure of putting the time, effort, and energy into it. And there are no shortcuts, really. I mean, um, you know, having the plan, the focus up front and having, you know, your purpose and your mission is really important. It's going to help you save a lot of time. But there's no shortcut. You, know, you still have to put the time, and energy, and effort into it. That's absolutely right. You, bottom line is, if you're not writing, you're not a writer. <laughs> so, yeah, when it comes down to it, 
you know, we're going to have to sit your ass down on the chair with the computer and write the words. And the reality is some days you'll feel sick. Some days you'll hate yourself. Some days you'll, you'll think that you're, never gonna, you're not worthy of being a writer and that everything you do is totally crap and no one's going to like it. And some days you'll write stuff and you'll delete it all the next day. But realistically, if you don't write anything, you've got nothing to play with. And so I totally agree with Tom there. It's, it's, it's like an everyday activity. And to me, it doesn't make any difference whether it's Christmas or New Year's Day or my birthday or whatever it is. I love writing, so I'm always going to write no matter what. And if I'm not writing, then obviously something very odd has happened and I need to check myself, you know. So even if it's like 15 minutes, even if it's one minute, even if you write one sentence, at least you actually sat down and did it because creating the habit is more important than what you did in that day. And that's a really important lesson for life overall is that the habits we create are more important than the things that we're doing. You know? And because the habits stay with you, the habits build for you, the habits basically keep you on track. Good habits are really our greatest asset more than anything else. So yeah, if you just start writing every day from now on, you're sooner or later gonna become a writer and get your stuff done so can't can't agree with that more all right so let's imagine that you finished your book it's got to the end you've edited it you know it's good enough to go and i actually want tom just to talk a little bit about what happens at the point of completion because there's two things here one is what are you going to do next in terms of publishing the book and monetizing it but before that this has happened to me, and I'm sure it's probably happened to Tom, and I'm no doubt it's happened to plenty of other people. Was you finish a book, and you're like, "Hmm, not." It, it, there's a weird position where you can say, "I could carry on editing this forever." Is it really ready? Shall I do it? There's a point. This has happened to so many people where you actually have a finished product, and it just sits about, and nothing comes of it so how do you push yourself over the edge of the cliff so to speak and if there's any of that weird psychological strange stuff going on how do you know that it's basically done and it's good enough you know because this perfectionist madness that we have in us can always say that there's something wrong with it and that that literally is an endless struggle which has literally no end so what are you going to do about that yeah that that uh, is definitely an issue, you know, when am I done with my book? Because a lot of people get stuck in what I call just the, the editing nightmare, Was you're just editing and editing and editing. You know, I know a guy who's been editing a book for eight years and never got it published. And, uh, you know, it's easy to laugh at that and say, oh, my gosh, look at him, how silly he is. You know, he hasn't got his book published. But, you know, it happens to all of us and to some extent, you know, that perfectionist tendency. So what I've done with my books is actually use – outside motivation to force me to finish my book and so the way that I do that is is once I've written my book and my book is quote-unquote done and I've edited my own book and I'm just happy with it I send it to the editor I pay good money to a really good editor and have him edit my book and I ask them for feedback how can I improve and things like that and if I want to make more edits after the editors edit it then I do that and after that you know I'll I'll get the book to the editor, get the edited book back, and then I, ha I give myself one more round of editing. That's it. All I get is one more round of editing, and I have to publish it. And I have to publish it because I don't want to get stuck in that process. And But what happens is when I publish it, if there are any mistakes in that book, or if there are any issues with that book, or if there are things I want to add to that book to make it even better, I have to do it really freaking fast before a lot of people start buying my book and then they ask me, or or and I just don't feel like I've really given them that value, right? And I call that process frictionless publishing. And basically, for me, frictionless publishing is, is something that a lot of bloggers have been using for years, which is basically uh, they'll get a news article, and they'll just publish the post right away as soon as they get any news information. And as more news comes in, they edit the article, they update it, they make you know add more content and more information to the article. Um, but they just get that initial base article out there as fast as possible because in, in the blogging world, it's so important to get that. In the publishing world, you know, speed is really important too. Um, but why I think this process is so important for me personally, and it, you know, it doesn't work perfectly for everyone, but for me, I really love it um, because it forces me to get the book done. I cannot, you know, I can't leave a book on the shelf for months or years 
because I know after I send it to the editor, I get one round and that's it, and I have to publish it out there. And you know, a lot of times I'll edit the book two, three, four times after it's published until I'm you know, until I'm like really happy, like okay, I'm totally done with this one. I'm going to move on to my next project. Uh, but that that just speeds up the whole process much faster and gives me that that extra motivation from my readers to make sure that you know I really am delivering the best possible book I can. So I think that's really important. Because and the other reason that that I think you know publishing quickly is really important is because you are going to get feedback from readers, and a lot of times you could spend twenty years editing a book, and one comment from a reader will give you a better idea than you would ever get in those twenty years, and but if you don't publish the book, you'll never know, you'll never get that feedback, so I think it is really important to to publish quickly, to not be a, you know a huge perfectionist, and a lot of people have argued with me in this, and they say no, you know, like it has to be perfect, you know, spend twenty, spend a year editing, or spend as much long time as you need, to really get it edited and get it perfect. And I think, you know, with eBooks this day, at least, it's just so easy to edit an eBook. I mean, within twenty four hours, I can, I can, you know, upload edits to Kindle, and within twenty four hours, you know, the old version doesn't exist anymore. It's all that updated content. So, you know, if you do make a mistake, if there are typos, uh, if there's a factual error. Or if there's just content that you wanted to add and wasn't in the original edition, you can edit it so quickly today that I think um, I think that's the best process that's worked best for me. Yeah, Tom is great. I've got to give Tom, you know, like massive blessings and round of applause publicly here for his ability to get things finished. You know, because a lot of people don't. And Tom, how what was it? Thirty books or something? Twenty? Twenty books in twelve months? That's, that that's impressive, yeah. For someone to publish one book ever is impressive, but twenty in a, in a year—that's crazy. And um, I've got a, a even more ridiculous and extreme version um, of this. Uh, currently, I have advertised my mailing list that I'm going to give them the first edition of my new book, which I'm currently writing right now from scratch, actually, um, within the next. Uh, what is it today? Within the next nine days. And if I don't, I'm going to pay them double what they paid me. So I'm going to owe everyone $40 because they're going to get a book plus an audio. So I'm going to owe a lot of money if I don't give them that book. And I have to finish it in nine days. Do you know what I mean? So I'm not messing about here. And I told them it's the first edition. There's no doubt going to be upgrades. But here's what happens there. Not only do I get paid before I've even written the book, yeah, which is nice, also... It forces me to finish the thing and get it done and not allow too much nonsense to come and get me and like add all this extra stuff that shouldn't be there in the first place. And third thing is they're going to give me really good feedback that's going to make it better and then I'll actually publish it on Kindle. I'm just going to give them an ebook to begin with so they can just read it without any pressure. So they're stoked because they get a book right away. It's brand new. They get to give their comments and let people feel good about that because they know that they're making it better. And it's done. You know, I don't recommend that for most people because it's a little bit extreme and you've got to be able to pull it off. But if but that outside accountability does make things way easier to do because I find that left to our own devices, we human beings have a quite remarkable tendency for procrastination. So <laughs> unless you're someone like Tom who's somehow got some magic powers that most of us don't have. But other than that... <laughs> you're going to probably procrastinate. So setting up something where there's some kind of penalty if you don't do it with a deadline, that for me works extremely well and just gets things done. And I feel excited about it as well. So that's just a little personal story there. So let's imagine you've got your book finished. You've you've done it however you have. Now, how are you going to publish it so that people see it, people find it, people buy it? so that money goes into your bank account that you can then spend on whatever you want to. All right, so this is this is really the fun part. So today, uh, how it works is there are so many ways to, to publish a book. So you can go traditional publishers, which are, which are like the big six publishers, and those are the ones that will get you and uh, you know all the bookstores, and you'll be on all the websites online, and you'll have this massive distribution. And you know, big PR campaigns, hopefully behind your book. Then there are like independent publishers, which are you know, there's so many these days. Some of them will do only paperbacks. Some of them will do only eBooks. Some of them will do both. And then there's self-publishing. And again, self-publishing, there's so many different ways you can do self-publishing. So you can pay an outside company to print your book for you and to do the work and design, the contracting, 
uh, that kind of stuff, or you can basically do all the work yourself. So there's so many different ways uh, to publish a book. But the way I did it was self-publishing, and that's what I think makes sense for the majority of authors these days. There's a couple of reasons why that makes sense for most authors. First of all, uh, the traditional publishing industry is changing so much right now because of the advent of ebooks, because of the change of economics of the industry. I you know a lot of publishers are going out of business. Many, many, many publishers have gone out of business or are you know, having financial struggles. There's a lot of consolidations like Random House and Penguin uh, merging. So there's all kinds of consolidation and change in the industry right now. And the, the big publishers are, because of that, they're basically cutting back. And they're taking on less new clients and putting less promotional dollars into their newest clients. And so if you're a brand new author, first time author, it's going to be a lot harder for you to get into a big publisher today than it was five years, 10 years, 20 years ago. So uh, another reason that self-publishing makes so much sense is just because of the economics of it. So if you look at the economics of publishing an ebook versus publishing a paperback or a physical book, I mean, it's so, so much different. So for an ebook, the distribution cost is basically the cost of sending a file through the Internet, which is pennies. So Amazon's distribution fee, depending on the size of your book, might be one penny or 20 pennies for a, a huge book with thousands and thousands of photos. So delivery costs for an ebook versus a physical book are just so much less. So uh, the cost of actually distributing the customer is much less, which means you're going to have much more profit in your pocket at the end of the day. The other thing is that the cost to produce an ebook is much less as well. So not only is it cost less to send the ebook file uh, versus shipping a physical book, but to actually print a physical book costs money. And the bigger your book is, the more money it's going to cost. So for you know a 400-page book, if you do print-on-demand publishing, it might cost you four dollars to print that book, but to, to print an ebook doesn't cost doesn't cost anything. So you can actually end up the economics of it, how it works is if you get a traditionally published hardcover book with a big publisher and that book sells for twenty five dollars to the customer, you make about a dollar in royalty on that book. But if you sell a two dollar ninety nine cent ebook on Amazon and you self publish it, you make seventy percent royalty. So you make more than two dollars on that two ninety nine ebook. So if if you know with a big publisher you sell a thousand copies at twenty five bucks you make a thousand dollars. If you sell a thousand copies of an ebook at two ninety nine on Amazon you make two thousand dollars twice the profit. And you know how hard is it to sell a twenty five dollar hardcover book as opposed to two ninety nine ebook? It's so much harder these days. And if you look at the the sales right now in the United States, right now in twenty thirteen there's about four billion dollars in ebook sales and about ten billion dollars in paperback physical book sales. And by 2016, PricewaterhouseCoopers uh, did a study. They, they predict that by 2016, it will be more than $10 billion in ebook sales and not any growth in, in physical book sales. So all the growth right now is in ebooks. And in a few years, you know, right now today, people download and buy more ebooks than they do physical books. But because the cost is so much less, they don't actually spend more money on ebooks. They spend about half as much money on ebooks. But in three years, that's all going to change. People are going to actually spend more money on ebooks than they do on physical books. So if you're so when I was looking at this data and I was, you know, figuring out how to publish and, and you know what made most sense from a business standpoint, it was just so obvious that look, the economics are behind ebooks, not physical books. And because the economics are behind ebooks, not physical books, it doesn't really make sense to go for me, it didn't make sense to go with a big publisher or a self publishing house where I had to pay to print thousands of copies. It didn't make sense to focus on the physical book because I knew I was gonna sell more ebooks and I was gonna make more profit on the ebooks than on the physical books. So for me, I knew because I couldn't find any companies at the time that were just specializing in really selling ebooks and marketing ebooks. I knew how to do it myself, and so I spent that you know the first year not just writing twenty books and publishing my books, but I spent every second I wasn't writing. I spent studying how do I market and sell my books, and so what I figured out is that self-publishing for me made the most sense, and uh, so it's it's pretty simple process actually to to publish your book. Um, so. What I say, you know, first thing you do is focus on your ebook. That's where the most profit's gonna be made, that's where it's gonna cost the least to get your book published. So the first step is, is publish your ebook. If your ebook is selling enough and making enough money where it makes sense to publish a paperback, then do that. And if it's selling really, really, really well, then you can even publish an audiobook, which is gonna cost even more to produce than a physical book. Um, but uh, the distribution is obviously, you know, basically nothing for an audiobook as well. Um, so that's that's the Priority series of priority is first of all ebook, then paperback, then audiobook. Um, that's that's what you want to focus on. So to actually upload a book to Kindle, um, again I want to talk about you know where to, to publish your ebooks. So Amazon right now in the United States owns about 67% of the ebook market. 
is Amazon. And the next biggest competitor owns 12%. So there really isn't even a close second to Amazon. Uh, Barnes & Nobles. Yeah. So uh, so because Amazon you know, controls 67% of the market, you know, I said, why don't you just focus on Amazon? Because the time it takes to upload your and publish your book onto any one platform is going to be the same no matter where you're publishing it. So I wanted to spend all your focus and time and energy just getting on one platform. And Amazon makes that such a good idea because of their program called Kindle Direct Publishing, KDP Select. And this KDP Select program is basically an exclusive 90-day contract with Amazon. And it means you will only publish your ebook on Amazon. You can't sell it on Barnes & Nobles or Kobo or iBooks anywhere else. Only on Amazon, and you might think that's crazy. Why would I only sell my book on Amazon? But first of all, they own 67% of the market in the U.S. and over 79% in the U.K. And those are the two big markets right now. The other markets like China and India and Brazil, those are growing, but they're not nearly as big. So those are the two big markets, and Amazon dominates those markets. And in KDP Select, what Amazon will do is it'll actually allow readers to borrow your book for up to a month or more for free. They can borrow your book for free, so it's free for the reader to read your book if they have Amazon Prime, uh, but Amazon will actually pay you more than $2 in basically like a royalty um, for the privilege of having customer b- borrow your book for free. So you're getting paid more than you would get paid to sell two hardcover books just to have someone borrow your book for free. But the economics just makes so much sense. And what we found is that uh, with my books and now with the publishing company and our clients' books, between 10 and 25% of our revenue comes from those borrows from Amazon. So that's more than you would make from publishing on Barnes and Nobles and Kobo and iBooks combined. So you're making more money in KDP Select by having people borrow your book for free and getting paid for it than you would by publishing uh, everywhere else in the world. And uh, you know, and there's been lots of news articles recently as well. The guy named is Hugh. I can't remember his last name, but his name is Hugh, and he wrote the Wool series. And it's this, you know, self-published this book on Kindle and KDP Select sold millions and millions and millions of copies. Um, the guy's a multimillionaire now. Uh, and he used KDP Select Publishing. And, but what happened is a few years ago, he actually switched to Barnes & Nobles and iBooks and all these other platforms as well as Amazon. He found his income went down after switching. So if you think, you know, yeah, I want to get my book published everywhere, well, hey, you, your income might actually go down significantly if you choose to do that. So that's why we focus on KDP Select. That's why I recommend publishing eBooks with Amazon's KDP Select program and just focusing on the eBook because that's where, you know, 90% of the money is going to be made is on Amazon with a Kindle book. Yes, you can publish your book on Barnes and Nobles and Kobo, other places. You can do physical books, you can do all these things. But ninety percent of the money is going to come from that one place, and it's going to take so much less time to do it and to learn how to do it than to focus on everything else. So that's why I started uh, a free training program called Ebook Publishing School, and you can check it out ebookpublishingschool.com. And in that free training program, I walk you through the entire process of publishing a book on Kindle. So once your book is written, your manuscript's ready, it's been edited, I take you through the whole process of how do you format the book for Kindle because there's a special formatting requirements so that when someone downloads your book on Kindle, they can actually read it and it actually looks nice and clean and there's not weird layout and stuff like that. So I walk you through the whole formatting process. I walk you through the whole process of uh, uploading your book to Kindle, actually physically how do you go to the website, what buttons do you click, where do you click on it. walks you through all that. Walks you through cover design, how to get a cover designed, uh, the dimensions that needs to be, everything you need to know about cover design, formatting, uploading your book to Kindle, and getting it published, and even some more bonus tips on marketing, all for free at ebookpublishingschool.com. So rather than go through all that information right here, which would take you know a couple hours, you know just go there, get all that free information. Um, but again, that's what I want you to know before you go there and before you start is that you know if you focus just on your books on Kindle, you use KDP Select, you focus only on marketing ebooks on Amazon, that's where almost all your money is going to come from. And if you want to expand after that, that's, that's wonderful, that's great. But you know, if you start there, it's going to be a lot easier. Like we talked about with the book, you know, having the limitations on yourself, you know, focusing just on you know one topic for your book rather than on eight or ten different topics is really going to help you, you know, get it done much faster, and this is going to help you make money much faster. And that's why I was able to make so much money so quickly, is because I was so focused. You know, I wasn't trying to publish my book on Smashwords and Kobo and everywhere else. I wasn't focused on paperbacks and audiobooks that first year. I was just focused on how do I publish ebooks on Amazon. How do I use KDP Select to sell as many books as possible? And so if you follow that same process, you're going to make money a lot faster, a lot quicker, and a whole lot easier. Absolutely. That's fantastic. And just just underscore a couple things here. Number one, focus. Focus, focus, focus. Tom's been on about this all the way through. Focus. So focus on the topic. 
make sure that what you're doing is actually very, very focused. And Amazon's great. Everyone's pretty much using Amazon nowadays. Enormous company. You know, it's just it's a monster of a thing. And you know, Kindle is a fantastic thing. I have I have like got three Kindles now, <laughs> and uh, they're great. You know, you can anyone can can read a Kindle on any device pretty much. You know, you can download the app and you can use it on all these different devices. So anyone with some sort of electronic device just about can read Kindle books these days. So that's good news. And definitely check out Tom's website. Tom, not only does he give away free tips, he also can publish your stuff and go through the whole thing and like actually make it work for you so that he can take a lot of the pressure off and actually get it out there in a real way. So I'd love Tom to just share a little bit more about how he does that and what he does for people who are very serious and want to like jump onto the next level, you know, and of course, you know, check out all the free stuff that he's doing so you can do it yourself. But um, I know there's always people like myself who just want someone to do it for them. (laughs) So Tom, share a little bit more about that. Yeah, so actually how I started the publishing company is uh, about my 12th month when I when I had that big month. And uh, I really didn't, I mean, I wasn't really telling people at the time, like, I made this much money this month. I wasn't, like, bragging about it. But just from marketing my own books on Facebook and on Twitter and social media and my email list, I had all these people saying, oh, my God, Tom, you're selling so many books. Like, this is amazing. You're obviously doing really well. You know, I have a book idea. Can you help me get my book published? And so I started creating this free training videos like ebook publishing school. I just started teaching people this is how I did it. And I just thought, hey, if I just teach people how I did it and I give it to you for free, like it'll be super easy. Everyone will do it and I won't have to answer the same email like 500 times in a week because I was getting so many emails. You know, how do I upload a book to Kindle? So I just started creating all these free training videos for people. Uh, but what I noticed was a lot of people were, were watching the training videos. They loved the training videos. Um, and a lot of people were going and publishing their own books and having a lot of success. But there was a, a group of people that they had watched all my videos. They understood everything I had done, everything I knew about publishing and uploading and marketing and cover design and formatting. They understood all the stuff. It was perfect. They just didn't want to do it. They just said, you know, Tom, I'm a writer. I just want to write novels. I just want to write books about stretch relief. I just want to write books about gardening. I want to focus solely on writing, and I want someone like you to just publish it for me. Like, do you know a good publisher? And so I started looking around trying to find a, a good publisher to recommend people to, and I couldn't find anyone that was really doing what I was doing at the level I was doing it with the marketing strategy that I was doing it at and uh, at a reasonable fee. I mean, a lot of these, these publishing companies were charging three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 and doing almost no marketing for that, for that kind of investment. And so I said, look, okay, I'll try a few of these people that were good friends of mine. I said, I'll, I'll try your book. You know, I can't promise anything, uh, but I'll publish it the way I've been doing. I'll do. I'll show you some of the marketing strategies that we've been using. I'll do some of the marketing for you, and we'll just test it out. So I started that in February 2013, and my my first five clients, all of them started doing really well, um, really fast. And one of them actually within 30 within 60 days of the time he he contacted me, his book was published and became a number one bestseller on Amazon and sold more than a thousand more than 1500 copies and, and within his first 60 days from the time he talked started talking to us it was only like two weeks after the book was published so because uh, of that kind of success I, I realized okay look this is amazing and i loved it like the, you know to help someone like dr mort orman who's been you know a doctor for 30 years you know a huge expert on stretch release studying this stuff for over 30 years and to have him be able to finally get that message out there after that huge period of time to thousands and thousands of people, and actually tens of thousands of people, because there was like 20,000 people downloaded his first book for free, as opposed to a couple thousand people buying it. So to have someone have that kind of success so fast, it just I found it was my passion. You know, you know, writing the books was great, but now like I'm having even more fun publishing other people's books. So that's kind of the long story of how we started TCK Publishing. But now we've had over 40 clients in the first year. We've had a lot of success, and basically how we do it is is you're, we're like partners, and we pay you 50% royalties. So half of every dollar we bring in from whether it's book sales on Kindle or paperback or audiobook or movie rights, movie deals, half of every dollar we bring in from your books, we pay back to you. And that's four to five or ten times more in some cases than, than most publishers will pay an author. So we're paying you way more than traditional publishers would pay, and uh, we're also – just making the process so much easier for you. So really, it's a structure like a partnership. That's why I wanted to be 50-50. And that's, you know, a lot of my colleagues, um, Michael, were telling me, like, that's crazy. Like, 
you know, because in the internet marketing world, like if you were going to do a video course and you were going to have a publisher publish your video course for you, the publisher takes 80 to 90 percent. The author takes 10 to 20 percent. And that's how the publishing industry has worked for hundreds of years. But I said, look, I want to do something different. I want to be a real partnership and let's do 50 50. And so really how it breaks down to the responsibilities is, is your responsibility as the author is just write great books. Write great books, deliver a great manuscript. You know, you have to edit it yourself. So I recommend some great editors who you know, are really economical, um, who do great work. Um, but your job is just come deliver a manuscript that's ready to be published, and we do everything else for you. So we do the formatting for Kindle. We'll help you come up with a title that's really going to sell your book well for you. The cover design, the formatting, the publishing, the marketing campaigns, we do – continuous ongoing marketing campaigns for your book and so that's how we structure the partnership and it just works really really well because i love the marketing i mean that's what i'm all about is the marketing and so we're looking for clients who are just passionate about writing so if you're just a full-time author if you've got um at least three books or three books and planned then uh we'd love to talk to you just check out the website it's tckpublishing.com that's tckpublishing.com and just hit the contact button or submission guidelines. Send us an email and uh, you know answer the questions on that page, and we'll get back to you and see if it'll be a good fit. Great. So you know this is a perfect win-win situation for someone who doesn't want to do their own marketing and just you know just wants to write. You know, so if you want to just write and you want to get paid for writing and that's it, then Tom's the guy. So go for it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's beautiful to be able to take the pressure off yourself of all the other stuff because, frankly, running running a business and writing all this or working out all the bits and pieces, some people love it and they want to do it all and they want, you know, complete ownership of everything they do, and that's fair enough. Other people, they just want to get it out there and get paid from it and just do what they love and do, do the bit of it that they love, and, and that's all good, you know. So if you're that kind of person, definitely contact Tom. So, Tom, thank you so much for this interview. It's fantastic. You know, you've really delivered massive value and clarified some, some big blocks that can screw people's lives up <laughs> and help them overcome it and giving a solution. So this is extremely powerful audio. I recommend that you listen to this again and take notes and, you know, get your book out there because if you've got a message, which I'm sure you have, your life experience, what you've gone through so far, what, all these things you've learned – People are interested. They want to learn from you. You have something to share. So get it out there. You know, it's so important. It's such a joy to release what is inside of you out into the world. You know, and I personally feel that we've come here into this world for a reason. We haven't just come here just to wander around. We've come here to do something wonderful. So if you've got a book inside of you, let it out. Let it out. Let it out. And this is how you can do it. Hey there, it's Tom Corson Knowles again. I hope you love the show today and I hope you got some really great notes and some great information. If you'd like to connect more with Michael McIntosh, check him out at michaelmackintosh.com. That's M-I-C-H-A-E-L. And then McIntosh is M-A-C-K-I-N-T-O-S-H.com. If you want to get all the latest episodes and news about the Publishing Profits Podcast show, join us at publishingprofitspodcast.com. And please make sure to subscribe to the show on iTunes and leave us a review. Let us know what you think. You know, We'd love to get your feedback and see how we can make the show even more even more useful and better for you. So we want to teach you what you want to learn. Uh, we want to interview the people on the show that you really want to learn from and hear from in the publishing industry. So if you have any, any guests you want to recommend for the show, go ahead and contact us. You can reach me at tom at tckpublishing.com. That's tom at tckpublishing.com. So stay tuned for next week's show. We're going to have a special mystery guest for you. I'm not going to tell you uh, who they are, but I'm going to tell you you're absolutely going to love them. They're a really mover and shaker in the industry. And it's going to be a wonderful show. All right, so I'll see you next week. Take care.